It's well known that Boston has an expensive housing market and that many people are being displaced, but the city's focusing on people with the most urgent needs and a new action plan to reduce evictions. To tell us about the plan and what's happening with evictions are two officials in the Office of Housing Stability in the Department of Neighborhood Development. We'd like to welcome the Deputy Director, Dominique Williams, and Senior Program Manager, Caitlin Smith. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having us, Chris. Okay. I want to start with, with Caitlin because uh, this is an emphasis on evictions. There could be a lot more people being displaced and who have to move. Uh, why is an eviction so much worse? Well, um, one of the things that's been helping with keeping evictions down in this city is actually this office, the Office of Housing Stability, which the mayor created in 2016, um, opened first in 2017. And so our main focus is to prevent evictions. And in just 2019 alone, uh, our office prevented 724 evictions. Now, when you, when you get evicted, uh, why is that worse than just having to go through the hassle of, of moving to another place? I mean, you've got a record that follows you. Isn't that one of the main reasons? Yeah, when you get evicted, you have a housing court record, um, and there's a website that's public information. So landlords, property managers, not just in Massachusetts, but even all over the country, can access your eviction record, can just look up your name and see that you have a record. So even if you were evicted for no fault of your own, that record exists, and then you've got to explain it to property managers and landlords down the line. Dominic, this isn't just about a hot market, because when I look at your findings on where the evictions are happening, uh, you know, it's mainly Dorchester, Roxbury, and there are racial disparities here. Uh, what did you find? So our eviction data does not actually track the race of tenants who are being evicted. Um, since 2015, our office has had a partnership with Homestart where we have to go into the housing court and call through all of the eviction records in the Eastern District Housing Court. Um, and those court records don't always tell a complete story. They don't tell us how many people are in the households that are being evicted. They don't tell us the race um, or the English language capabilities of the folks who are being evicted at all. Uh, coming back to Kate, when I think of evictions, the first thing that, that I, uh, I picture are you know, private market uh, landlords and speculators, but, but a lot of the evictions that you're concerned with are in subsidized housing, some of it even publicly owned. Yeah. What's going on there? Yeah, so while um, tenants in subsidized housing are paying 30% of their income on rent, life happens. Um, crises happen, so there may be medical bills, um, a family member dies or gets very ill, and there are lots of expenses that are tied to that, and, and tenants don't always have the ability to recertify their income fast enough, and they get behind in rent. Uh, Germany, another thing about evictions, I have uh, came into this expecting that they were just still climbing and climbing and climbing, but I guess that's not exactly what you see. That's correct. So as Caitlin said, in 2019, we were able to prevent uh, 724 evictions. That's um, an increase of 27% over the previous year, over 2018. Um, so, and typically we've seen from our eviction data that the, the number of cases that are filed in Eastern District Housing Court pretty much remains steady at just under 5,000 cases um, since 2016. Well, 700 plus prevented, that's a lot of prevention. What did you do to make that happen? Our office has access. So we first we know that the main reason that tenants are evicted is based on the fact that they're not able to pay their rent. Um, so non-payment is the key issue. So we have city flex funds. We provided over $460,000 in flex funds, which is direct money to constituents who are facing an uh, eviction due to a rental arrearage. Um, we also have stopped, stepped up um, communication between both property managers, some small landlords, and of course the work of the task force um, has been able to identify some more upstream protections that tenants could benefit from as well. Okay, and what about uh, the amount of money tenants owe? Uh, what did you find out about that? Yeah, so on average, tenants in subsidized housing owe approximately $1,700 when mm -hmm. their eviction case is filed. And so that's not a lot of money. Um, so with just a little bit of city funding or state funding, we're able to help uh, tenants stay in their homes. And, and to me, what I'm reading between the lines, we're not talking about people who just never seem to get it together to, to pay their bills. These are people who, I guess, are just going through a rough patch, maybe. Correct. Correct. Right. 
This is BNN News, and we're talking with Dominique Williams and Caitlin Smith from the Department of Neighborhood Development. Uh, Dominique, what about some of the other ways that you could intervene and, and uh, prevent an eviction from happening? Uh, you mentioned some of that, but w w what's been going on recently with those? So um, we recognize that providing tenants and landlords with an opportunity to mediate some of the issues that they have, whether they're... Um, for, could potentially be a for-cause eviction if there's something that's happening on the property that's a lease violation. Um, so we help to do upstream work to connect landlords and tenants to those mediators. And then we also have a program that's new in the housing court, um, the, our housing court navigator. It's a partnership that we have with Metro Boston Housing. Um, there's someone who sits in the court who helps tenants to access both city flex funding as well as raft funding, which is money that comes from the state. Uh, Caitlin, what about legal representation? Because I've heard that most of the people faced with eviction uh, don't have it. Uh, it must make an enormous difference, doesn't it? It does. That's correct. So only 7% of tenants who are facing evictions in court tend to be represented by counsel, whereas 70% of landlords have legal representation. So that's a really big power dynamic. Um, in the courthouse, let alone the power dynamic that already exists outside of the courthouse between landlords and tenants. And so we have um, a partnership with Homestart and Greater Boston Legal Services, so we're able to help tenants access legal representation under, in certain circumstances. And we're also, as a city, really pushing for the right to counsel in eviction proceedings. We have a bill before the State House um, that's gone through the Judiciary Committee hearing, um, and we're, we're hoping to have it favorably voted on this year. Uh, uh, Dominic, typically, w w what does a tenant have to do to, to legally challenge an eviction? I mean, getting, getting a lawyer is part of it, but I mean, it must take time too, right? It can. Um, so there's a couple of ways that a tenant can get assistance. Not everyone is always going to have access to a lawyer. Um, programs like the Volunteer Lawyers uh, Project, as well as the Greater Boston Legal Services organizations do help tenants, um, but um, sometimes it's a matter of either finding finding funding, um, and sometimes it can be a matter of trying to access other uh, programs like the um, MADE app through Greater Boston Legal Services, um, which helps tenants to file uh, a response to their eviction. Caitlin, I also imagine there are some cases where there's only so much the property owner is going to give way on, there's only so much the tenant can give way on, and the result of that, it, it means there's going to have to be a move. Uh, can you help people at least get through that? Absolutely. So we will help negotiate a length of time for, for the tenant to be able to stay in that property, understanding both sides. Sometimes it's just not the right relationship between the property owner and the tenant. Um, and they do need to move. And so we'll help negotiate time to help the tenant find a new place. We also support tenants with housing search and placement. Um, our office has really great housing placement records as well with the different vendor agencies that we, we work with. Dominic, in this report, you looked at what's going on in some other cities. Is there anything that stands out as something that you wanted to copy here in Boston? Yes, so the first would, I would say, would be our eviction prevention task force. Um, in 2016, the city of Philadelphia explored their eviction um, records and rates and saw that this was an issue that needed to be addressed. So all of our task force um, findings fairly similarly mirror what was reported in Philadelphia. Um, they found that tenants were being evicted based on the fact that they owed rent and tried to um, provide financial assistance. Um, they also found that upstream work and media access to mediators is helpful in addition to additional legal resources. Well, we should note that uh, if any renters or property owners have any questions, uh, is there someone they can turn to in your, your office? That's right. We actually have a small but mighty team. Uh, there's eight of us. Uh, Three are housing crisis coordinators who help tenants to either find affordable housing or to help navigate the shelter system in Boston. Um, and we can be reached at, can I give the number? Absolutely. 617-635-4000. Thank you both very much, uh, Dominique Williams and Caitlin Smith from the Department of Neighborhood Development.